SpaceX's Workhorse Falcon 9 rocket just successfully launched its 200th consecutive mission. It has set itself up to double its insane record for the number of consecutive successes by an orbital rocket. Not only that, this milestone has completely smashed the entire space industry. Let's take a closer look in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First of all, I wish to address that this is the result of seven years of non-stop effort from the SpaceX Falcon team. Remember 2016? Amidst the sweltering heat of a Florida morning, a dedicated team of SpaceX engineers commenced the fueling of a Falcon 9 rocket in preparation for a critical pre-launch firing test. This particular year had posed its fair share of challenges and triumphs for the California rocket company, finally beginning to fulfill its long-standing promise of increased launch frequency. Over the course of arduous months, a diligent assembly of engineers and technicians at SpaceX's Cape Canaveral facilities had tirelessly persevered, perfecting the intricate load-and-go fueling process required for the Falcon 9 rocket. To optimize the rocket's payload capacity, the team employed super-chilled liquid oxygen, employing every available space within the vehicle. However, once the rocket was fueled, time became a crucial factor as the Florida heat would rapidly warm the the liquid oxygen. That summer, the engineering team relentlessly pursued their goal of minimizing the propellant loading time, striving to launch with the coldest oxygen possible and extract the utmost performance from the vehicle. On that morning, in a bid to expedite the pre-launch preparations by a single day, SpaceX had already affixed an Israeli satellite atop the Falcon 9 rocket in anticipation of the static fire test. Sadly, as the countdown progressed smoothly on September 1st of 2016, the unforeseen occurred. Without warning, the rocket violently exploded, scattering fragments across the swamplands for miles. The $200 million satellite met a fiery fate, plummeting to the ground, leaving no remnants. The engineers had encountered the limits of how quickly the rocket could be fueled. The Amos 6 accident, internally known as Flight 29, proved to be a gut-wrenching setback for SpaceX. With the destruction of the Space Launch Complex 4D pad, the company found itself without operational launch pads or available rockets, turning out to be the most difficult and complex failure we have ever had in 14 years, Musk tweeted at the time. It was an exceedingly challenging period that bolstered skepticism among doubters at NASA and within the human spaceflight community, casting doubt on SpaceX's capacity to safely transport astronauts aboard the Falcon 9 rocket. Skeptical voices echoed, questioning the decision to entrust human lives to such a vehicle. Nevertheless, the Amos 6 incident marked the final significant accident involving the Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX went from launch failure to making a historic first landing of an orbital class booster after only six months. It seems so unbelievable, considering that we're talking about the Falcon 9, which is probably the safest rocket ever launched. In fact, the company has been launching this broomstick thick and fast of late. For the latest launch, SpaceX launched 52 more of its Starlink internet satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9's first stage returned to Earth about 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, making a vertical touchdown on SpaceX's drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is stationed in the Pacific Ocean. It is the 14th launch and landing for this particular booster, according to a SpaceX mission description. However, the significance of this achievement goes far beyond a single rocket. In reality, this momentous launch signifies a groundbreaking milestone, 200 successful launches of the Falcon 9, consecutively. To put this accomplishment into perspective, it propels Falcon 9 into uncharted territory, surpassing the track record of any orbital rocket in history. There are only two other rockets with a string of successful flights comparable to the Falcon 9. 
One is the Soyuz U variant of the Russian rocket, which launched 786 times from 1973 to 2017. The other is the American Delta II rocket, which recently retired. Let's move on to each vehicle's achievements and how they stack up against the potential of SpaceX's workhorse rocket. The Soyuz U rocket held a streak of 112 consecutive successful launches between July of 1990 and May of 1996. It's worth noting that one of these missions, the Cosmos 2243 launch in April of 1993, encountered a critical failure. This incident, where the rocket's control system malfunctioned during the Block 1 burn's final phase, resulted in the payload being intentionally destroyed. Taking this failure into consideration, the Soyuz U rocket ran 100 successful launches from 1983 to 1986. Next up, the Delta II rocket, initially developed by McDonnell Douglas and later operated by Boeing and United Launch Alliance, also achieved 100 consecutive successes during the same period. Notably, the Delta II rocket had a total of 155 launches with only two failures throughout its operational lifespan. Its final mission in 2018 marked the Delta II's 100th consecutive successful flight. As SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of space exploration, its achievements the achievement of 200 consecutive successful Falcon 9 launches stands as an unparalleled feat in the history of rocketry. There is no way to know how many missions the Falcon 9 will ultimately fly, but at its current rate, the rocket could reach 500 flights before the end of this decade. However, SpaceX is also actively working to put its own booster out of business. The success of the company's Starship project will probably ultimately determine how long the Falcon 9 will remain a workhorse. Nevertheless, it seems likely that the Falcon 9 will fly for a long time yet. This is only because it now provides the only means for U.S. astronauts to get into space. And while NASA's Deep Space Orion vehicle and Boeing's Starliner spacecraft should come online within the next couple of years, the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft will very likely remain the lowest risk and lowest cost means of putting humans into orbit for at least the next decade. By the way, uh, speaking of Dragon, it also just successfully completed a special task of its own. A capsule carrying a decorated former NASA astronaut and three paying customers returned home from the ISS Tuesday, concluding a historic week-long mission for the crew. After a fiery re-entry, the Crew Dragon and passengers made a safe splashdown off the coast of Panama City, Florida in the Gulf of Mexico at 11.04 p.m. ET. This mission was also a milestone in the history of spaceflight as stem cell researcher Rihanna Barnawi became the first woman from Saudi Arabia to travel to space. The Axe 2 mission is one in a lineup of commercial missions designed to spur private sector participation in spaceflight, particularly in low Earth orbit, where the International Space Station orbits. Actually, this mission isn't the first time individuals have paid their way to space. A company called Space Adventures brokered several such missions to the space station in the early 2000s, booking rides for wealthy thrill seekers on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft. Axiom brought that business model to the United States, partnering with SpaceX to establish a framework for getting an array of customers to the space station. The company's first foray, Axiom Mission 1 or AX-1, launched in April of 2022 and marked the first time private citizens traveled to the space station from U.S. soil. Axiom's goal is to make these missions routine, offering more opportunities for people who are not professional astronauts to experience spaceflight. During a pre-launch news conference, Derek Hassman, Chief of Mission Integration and Operations at Axiom Space, said his company expects to see more customers sponsored by governments, similar to the AX-2 passengers from Saudi Arabia. Axiom leadership envisions private spaceflight will continue even after the space station is retired which NASA anticipates will happen in late 2030. Axiom is one of several U.S. companies gunning to create a new privately owned space station. It's an effort supported by NASA which aims to bolster private sector participation closer to home so the agency can focus on investing in deep space exploration. In short, this wouldn't be possible without SpaceX's team and their great contributions. So, keep up the good work, people. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.